So I guess we'll get going. Um, I'm Diane Gold. I'm happy to present session three, public health and indoor microbial communities. And uh, I've just had the pleasure of meeting uh, Maria Gloria Dominguez Bejo <laughs> from N NYU School of Medicine, who's going to talk about microbial biogeography of homes across urbanization gradients. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to the organizers for uh, this great symposium. It's been a great session this morning. I'm going to talk uh, uh, about the microbial biogeography of homes across urbanization. And I'd like to start <clears throat> but by reminding that the world was first bacterial, and bacteria were colonizing all environments on Earth uh, much earlier, two billion years earlier than multicellular forms that had to cope with this uh, bacterial environmental, um, uh, bacterial environmental environment, uh, bacterial uh, environment. And as these forms uh, evolved, they were themselves colonized by bacteria. So posterior life after bacteria brought the idea of self bacteria and non-self bacteria, which is, I think, very important. Um, all animals and plants have their own self bacterial microbiota in a way that, interestingly, uh, it recapitulates the whole tree of life. And here are the tree of life, uh, uh, the current tree of life, the tree partite. An animal is not only itself, um, its species, but it also contains bacteria, archaea, fungi, and ciliates, and it's recapitulating the whole uh, tree of life. And humans uh, have been here for a very short time, only 200,000 years. And they uh, colonize all, or uh, yeah, colonize all the continents on Earth, uh, adopting diver diverse lifestyles according to climates and from the tropics to the cold weathers. And that's the way we were and our ancestors were until now. In the Anthropocene, we are uh, observing a convergence of all the lifestyles into a single Western lifestyle. And urban population is predominant already. We passed the 50% recently. And we know projections indicate that all the human population growth from now will be only urban. And as we have heard, uh, urbanization is linked with increased risks of diseases, urban diseases or modern plagues that are diseases related to malfunction of the immune system with consequences for the immune system or metabolic systems as well. So there are two hypotheses that have been proposed to explain modern plagues and we've heard about them this morning. <clears throat> One is the hygiene hypothesis, uh, which arose in the late uh, 80s. And it says that it is the environmental exposure what matters uh, in childhood. The second one is the disappearing microbiota hypothesis, which states, uh, states that also in childhood, it is the exposure to human microbes or the lack of exposure to the hu needed human microbes, which leads to disease. Uh, I think uh, we need more evidence to support both, but I think both are important. And we have changed our lifestyle in important ways, both 
in the self microbial uh, stage where we get transmission of human bacteria, mostly from our moms when we are very young. But also the second stage after strict lactation, especially where babies are intensively and intimately exposed to the environment. We perturb trans transmission of human microbes early in life with our technology, and we expose kids to environments that are artificial, with excluding nature. With uh, Rob Knight, some years ago, we worked on what is the effect on C-sections on the neonates. And we can see here that uh, the maternal microbiotas are oral in green, vaginal in red, and skin in purple. And the babies, according to birth mode, will cluster to vaginal or skin if they were born by C-section. So we ask the question, where are the skin bacteria seeding C-section born babies uh, coming from? So we decided to look at operating rooms, and we did this study with a collaboration of an architect, Umberto <laughs> Cavallin, from the University of Puerto Rico, and uh, Hak Don Shin, um, a postdoc in the lab, where we swapped uh, in Puerto Rico and in New York operating rooms. We found that in relation to the human microbiome project bacteria, uh, we can see the stool in green, the oral in blue, skin in uh, orange, uh, vaginal in purple. Our operating room dust, which came mostly from the walls that are not frequently clean, and from the top of the lamps uh, that surgeons use uh, during the procedures, uh, were clustering their bacterial content uh, cluster with skin. And the distances community distances we were closest to skin. We also stained the dust and found, using uh, two different staining, uh, we found that the operating room swabs had bacterial, have had human skin flakes. So the built environment is indeed seeding with human skin bacteria an important proportion of babies that are born sterile. Uh, especially in urban places. We also ask another question, and which uh, uh, was brought this morning uh, in a question that uh, Paula asked. Does it, it, does it make a difference to be born at home or in the hospital? And Joanne came to my lab. I discouraged her to do this study with 10 women in each side because I thought, you know, the, the impact is so, is so small, but she insisted and did other things to save her PhD thesis just in case. And she said a study with 10 women uh, born at home and turn, 10 in the hospital, all babies delivered by midwives in both places. Um, so all vaginal deliveries, no antibiotics, and everybody, all the babies were fed and she sampled the microbiota during the first month. And although there weren't differences, major differences in alpha diversity, at least with 10, uh, 10 babies in each group, differences in beta diversity were significant, to my surprise. And guess what microbes were enriched in the hospital uh, in relation to home? The same, uh, the smoking gun microbes. Enterobacteriaceae, to which E. coli belongs, and Clostridium. In relation to home babies who had more bacteroides, Bifidobacterium, and Streptococcus. So I want to uh, be, uh, note here that hospital is more than the hospital environment and that all hospital babies uh, are born with some degree of interventions, even interventions we think are very small, like labor induction, anesthesia, uh, episotomy. All babies in the hospital and none at home had the antibiotic uh, ointment uh, in the eyes that 
babies are uh, receiving because it's practice in this country, unlike Europe. Then we thought, okay, even small impacts matter at birth. But what about later? The second phase of development after birth and after um, maternal environment is the home environment. So we chose an urbanization gradient uh, in the Amazon from jungle huts to rural towns by the river to Iquitos and Manaus along the um, Amazonas um, River basin with a team of multidisciplinary people, architects, environmental um, uh, engineers, and, and Rob Knight. And we studied home and people's microbes. And what we, from the architectural point of view, urbanization implies enclosing the houses, that's the first step, an outer wall is built in the hat, and later internal subdivisions according to use of space. The areas of the houses grow, the density of occupation decreases. The air exchange rate also decreases with urbanization uh, from very high, 25 to 100 per hour, to still high, up to 15 per hour, still much higher than in the US, which is 0.5, but a significant uh, decrease in air exchange rate, which is consistent with enclosing the house. We look at bacterial and fungi composition. We published the bacterial story in a paper called Walls Talk because the walls were the best markers of use of space and of urbanization. We, could, we were able to separate the huts from the uh, rural town, from Iquitos and Manaus, uh, very clearly. The differences in the microbial bacterial composition of the swabs in walls and floors were mostly due to increased human skin microbiota and reduce soil bacteria. We look at fungi, and this is unpublished uh, uh, results, and we found that there were two major clusters of fungi in the houses of the jungle huts and the rural little river communities, clustering here in red and green, respectively. And then the other, the town of Iquitos in blue, the Manaus, two social classes, poor and middle class, uh, respectively in uh, yellow and orange. Uh, fungal diversity tended to increase with urbanization, and this is the same climate um, uh, along the, the uh, Amazonas basin, with uh, the most notable fun fungus uh, increasing being Aspergillus. So urbanization is associated with changes in our environment that include uh, inclu in increasing the enclosure, isolation of the house from the environment, decreasing air exchange rate, increasing fungal diversity, increasing human bacteria at the expense of natural environmental bacteria from the soil, plants, or animals. So, we do change our microbial world where we live and where our kids uh, develop. So how can, we, how can we do, of course we don't want to go back and live in the jungle, but how can we restore some of the natural uh, exposures, and we saw very interesting ideas in the previous talk, um, and I think we are clever enough to use our technology and keeping our urban status, respecting our biology. Uh, so go back and improve and optimize labor and early exposures and skin-to-skin -skin contact and breastfeeding. Um, we need to do a lot of research to improve labor, to make it less painful, more comfortable to the mother, not taking shortcuts the baby, we evolve to be born seated 
vaginally by the mothers. Uh, also, in our build environment, we could introduce nature in our houses, uh, with including animals and plants in the houses, but also a, a, an architectural and urban uh, design that is uh, inclusive for nature. I don't know if you know the beautiful project of Frank Lloyd Wright called Usonia. It's in Westchester, northern New York, uh, New York City. It's worth visiting because it's a beautiful project of integrating houses and nature. I want to thank the people. Um, I have many people to thank, but the major uh, players have been Rob Knight, uh, always important uh, for us in analysis of data and new tools. Sejin Song uh, also helps in the bioinformatics. My postdoc, postdoc in my lab at uh, NYU, Hak Don Shin. Jan Francis Ries, my Puerto Rican uh, PhD student. Uh, Humberto Cavallin, who led the architecture uh, team in Puerto Rico the team in uh, the University of Manaus um, that are uh, environmental um, uh, engineers. And I want to here to take advantage and mention my solidarity with Puerto Rico, with the scientists, my colleagues and friends who have lost all, the, all their samples. Uh, they are facing now an, an important challenge of their lives. Um, uh, they will have to start all over again, and it's a, it's a disaster similar to that that, that uh, scientists in New Orleans faced with Katrina. And with that, I'll ha be happy to take uh, questions. Thank you. A great talk. Um, so sometimes a C-section is necessary medically. I'm wondering, in those cases, could we somehow artificially do a vaginal inoculation on the baby right after birth, or do you think it's too late at that point? So we, we did that uh, study. We, did a, we published a pilot study with only 18 babies, of which four were, right as you said, were exposed to vaginal fluids of their mothers at birth. And we are now preparing with Rob uh, the publication of, of a bigger paper, still small, only 84 babies, of which 22 were swabbed with vaginal uh, fluids. And uh, it, it's going uh, slow because we had over 10,000 samples. Uh, that paper will again explain what, how, to what extent the exposure at birth restores. It does restore. If you expose a sterile, sterile baby to vaginal fluids, vaginal bacteria will colonize. That's the message. The important work now, I think, is to demonstrate what is the health relevance. And for that, a big clinical study is needed with 1,000 kids followed for five years. Thank you. Yeah.